Hello, so I'm Liz Ackerley and I'm here today at my studio which is at uh, Wood End Mill in Mosley. Uh, so you might well know of Mosley and know Manchester Road which is where Wood End uh, Mill is based. And I have a studio uh, here uh, at the mill. And this uh, area that you can see behind me is kind of a corner really of my studio because I kind of close this bit of it off during the winter because it's so cold uh, so I can try and keep myself uh, a little bit warm. Uh, so that's where I am. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background about me and my art and then what I'm going to share with you today. Um, I uh, originally uh, was a designer and then became an illustrator and did a lot of representational work of buildings, of places, of festivals and so on. And a few years ago now, maybe two and a half years ago, uh, I started to get interested into, in mixed media work. Uh, acrylics, uh, collage, uh, using a mixture of different media, watercolour and so on, uh, to uh, represent, to show, to show my work. Um, and at that point uh, I decided or I became quite aware that I wanted to show more in my work than um, just the places literally and representationally. I wanted to show more about my feelings of those places um, and I wanted to be more gestural and um, expressive in my work really rather than showing a literal representational scene. Uh, so for the last couple of years I've been uh, looking at how to do that uh, and I've taken a lot of workshops myself, uh, not only taught them but and trying to learn from others about how you unpick uh, this uh, going from a, a place to um, a less representational painting and how you do that. Um, so what I wanted to share with you today really uh, was some of the work I do as that kind of start point really. Um, how do you go out um, and look at places and look at landscape in my case. So this year and all of the work I'm going to share with you has been done in 2020 um, looking at the landscapes that surround me here, uh, so moorland and woodland and the, and the valleys in between is really my sort of focus. Um, and so what I've been doing is using a variety of different techniques out and about to uh, try and develop studies that I can use for my paintings. Um, and being a lot more playful and expressive, um, sometimes with colour, sometimes black and white, you can see that the, the work behind me is all of the work I've been doing outside and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but just to explain, I want to sort of share with you really some of the techniques, some of the results and some tips and some of the materials that I use and what I take out with me and that sort of thing because I think that can be quite helpful because it can be really quite overwhelming context. So I'm going to show you all the sorts of materials I use and then you know how I select and what I take with me because you obviously can't take big cases full of, of materials with you out in location it's really not practical you need to make it as easy as possible so I'll start over here um, this is so I should just explain overall actually before I start so the black and, and white stuff that you see at the end there um, and this work in the middle was all done out on location in the autumn woodland uh, in woodlands that are behind the mill here at Wood End Studios. And these uh, purple ones here um, were all done out on the moors in a couple of different locations actually during the summer whilst the heather was in flower. So let me now go from one side to the other just to explain. So these works were done, and, it, and by the way, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what side you work at, but these were done at A3 and A2, but in order to, to become quite expressive and loose, sometimes it helps to be a little bit, you know, to work a little bit bigger. Um, it just depends on what the practicalities are for you and whether that will work for you. So I would say with this type of charcoal approach, try and do it at A3 if you can, just because it can get, you know, you can make those moves and gestures with your arm and it becomes easier. So all of these were done with a combination of willow charcoal, compressed charcoal, and maybe some, some graphite. And I use a rubber to dig into the charcoal. Um, so those were done, as I say, out in the woodland. And all I did with these, actually, was to put the big shapes in very broadly um, and rubbed the charcoal into the paper, the big shapes of the trees and the canopies that I could see in front of me. And then I used my rubber to start digging in 
And when I'm looking at these uh, subject matters, I'm not sort of trying to produce a flat uh, view. I'm trying to, I'm pretending I'm actually crawling amongst the trees with my rubber, I'm going around the back and through and around. And you get these kind of nice white spaces and things, and then you can work over them with line work. And I'm not particularly going to focus on that today, but that's just a approach I use out and about when I'm using black and white. And I'm going to use that same approach in the winter, across the winter time uh, on the moors. Uh, so that's uh, those uh, studies. And of course you can do them at different sizes, but as I say, um, it is helpful um, if you can work a little bit bigger, especially with charcoal. So let's talk about these a little bit, and I'm actually going to demonstrate one of these as well. Um, these studies were done, again, out in the same woodland during the autumn time, as you can see the very sort of vibrant oranges and different colours. And I used A2 paper here. I'm going to talk about the paper specifically when we talk about the, the different materials, so I won't dwell on that. But all I've done here is to divide it with tape into four. It's an A2 divided into four, so each of these is just a little bit less than an A4. So if you didn't want to work bigger, you could just work on it on individual A4 pieces or whatever works for you. And I've just used three different materials here. I've used oil pastel, I've used soft pastels, and I've used some gouache. And it's the same sort of approach. I'm looking at the scene in front of me, and I'm rubbing in the materials and I'm overlaying them to create a depth and an interest and I'm being very loose and free and I'm not looking at the paper all the time, I'm rubbing in as I look and I'm thinking, oh yes, I want to change that colour and I can see that red branch there, so I'm working that in and I'm using line work over it and I think you can see here that broadly what I've got are big areas of colour and then line work. And that's broadly what I'm doing here. I'm using areas of colour that I'm rubbing in, in in all three materials, it depends what I feel like. And then I'm using line work, which is often a contour approach, a contour drawing approach, where I'm literally just letting my eye wander through the, the, the plants and the trees and the leaves and everything. And I'm using my, 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 as, my as my eye is following round, I'm just making marks on the paper. And I'm being very loose and expressive. And hopefully you can see here the wiggly lines, the scraping in lines, the more straighter lines, the swirly lines, and all different sorts of lines that I'm using with those three materials that I'm using. And that's really all I'm doing. Um, and you can see that you get some really interesting results. And I'm going to demonstrate how I do that as well. So you'll be able to see a little bit more and I'll try and talk you through as I go. And then I want to show you uh, these here. These were done a little bit differently. This is all done on A3. It's quite a nice size to work when you're using paint. And here what I've, I've done is I've used acrylic paint and then a couple of other things. So sometimes I use woodies, which are um, Stabilo pencils that are also water soluble. Sometimes I use my ink tense pencils, which give you a finer line. Uh, I think some of these lines here are the, are the intense pencils. So just a couple of colours. I try not to overload myself when I'm out and about, although I do have a lot of different colours back in the studio. Um, so those were done, and then I'm going to show. Um, in a minute, I'm going to show you a couple of things that are in my sketchbooks that aren't on the wall here, which are other techniques. And one of them is the fact that with these, I often, what I do, is I do these out and about. They only take me 10 minutes, 15 at the most. These ones are probably 10 minutes as well. And the same with those. So I don't, I try not to labour, try to keep the time uh, strict because it helps you be looser and freer. You've got not enough time to faff about. Um, and then what um, I often do with these is I often tear them and recreate uh, back in the studio because this is quite intuitive I'm not really thinking I'm just getting on with doing it and then I come back into the studio and I may take some of this white space away and rip things about and then reconfigure them and I often do that and then I use those works as inspiration back in the studio for paintings and I'll show you um, ones that have been done like that in my sketchbook of things further that I want to show you this is one of the uh, reconfigured collages I mentioned to you so this is summer woodland and uh, I did 
these pieces much the same way that I showed you the uh, summer moorland with the purple on the wall. I did these as A3 pieces uh, just with a limited palette of acrylic uh, paint. So I'll show you how I do what, uh, you know the, the detail of that in a minute. And together with um, a couple of other uh, tools, uh, a Stabilo pencil and a Woody. Um, and once I've done those A3 pieces, and I'm doing them very intuitively, I'm working quite quickly, I'm responding to what I'm seeing in front of me out on location. And then when I come back, I tear these up, I use a ruler with a straight edge to get to trim them and to sometimes reconfigure them. And I don't know if you can see here, but this piece is a collage piece that's stuck on. So this started its life with lots of messy edges around and I've trimmed them all off. I've turned it upside down actually compared to how I did it on location. And then I've added bits in. So you end up with something that is all automatically uh, not quite um, representational even if you started it as so. And so I've done a few of these. Here's another one. Um, I quite like having quite a bit of white space. You see, I take the white space off the edges, but I'm reintroducing white space into the middle. This is, a, I don't know if you can see, but it's this is a pe another piece that's been superimposed over the top so that you can reconfigure them and you can play around with the compositions. And then here's another one. Just so that you uh, can see, that's a different sort of technique I use and what I do with those acrylic painted pieces that I do outside. So that's that. Um, I should just mention that this is a, uh, a ring bound. I never take these out. I find them a little bit troublesome out, out and about actually. But this is a sea white. Most of my sketchbooks are, are sea white. I do find the cartridge paper very good um, and very uh, durable and sturdy. So I'm going to show you another uh, of the uh, sea white sketchbooks books now. But this one, um, just so you know I painted the cover that's what what that is because this is my moorland sketchbook I use an elastic band to keep the uh, the cover closed um, and unless some of them do come with a with a with it and, and then I don't need one um, and I wanted to just show you a couple of and I'm going to demonstrate how I do these how I do these very small uh, these quick studies small studies and quick studies um, these are uh, were done um, on an A4 that is taped off. So you end up, so each A4 has got, you know, these four pieces. So these are now um, A6 uh, pieces, or even slightly tinier. Um, and uh, what I do here is I set a timer for two or three minutes, and I'm just looking at shapes and lines, um, and I'm creating these images. And these can be quite helpful uh, back in the studio, just as, a, as further studies, really. They're very simple, there's a clarity to them. Um, a few more there. Just tell you what I, how I take things out. I use a, um, it's just a backpack bag, um, Northern Ridge this one, but it's got a nice backpack at the uh, pocket at the back so I can put A4 um, size things in it. It's got lots of pockets. Um, you can kind of use what you like, but I just find that useful because you, you just put, I can get everything into that. So in terms of papers, let me just show you uh, what I do. Um, so it's helpful to use to have some sort of a board, a sort of heavy board um, that you can lean on. Um, you can use these wallets are very useful actually. This is just a De La Roni one and um, it's rather battered now, but you know, you can see how useful that is because it not only does it keep your paper flat, but it doubles up as a, 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 back, a board that you can lean on. So that's very useful. In terms of the paper that I use, um, let me just uh, explain. I tend to not use lots of different types of paper. I tend to use cartridge paper when I'm out and about. Um, and this is C White 220 gram because it takes quite a lot of punishment. So I use that pretty routinely for the work that I do with acrylics, throwing water at it, charcoal at it, finishes at it and all of the rest of it. Um, and as I said to you, I often tape it off. So this is ready for some small studies that I'm going to demonstrate. So I've just used an ordinary tape for that. So that's the paper. Um, in terms of the black and white, let me start with black and white um, materials that I use. I don't necessarily take all of these out with me. I might just take one or two out with me. But I do use um, willow charcoal. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Conte markers. Um, that's a Posca and that's just a permanent marker. Uh, graphite, I'm a big fan of graphite. 
and then my favourite, compressed charcoal. Um, the compressed charcoal is really handy because it's unlike the willow charcoal, it's water soluble. You can press it into the paper, you can draw fine with it, you can rub it in and get some really beautiful velvety marks. So often I'll just use this with some spray water and maybe a graphite stick and some willow charcoal and that's all I'll take with me. Um, the other thing, just to, to finish by mentioning, is the rubber. That's quite important. Once you rub your charcoal in, especially with the willow charcoal, you can dig into it and get your white space back, like I was mentioning with those studies on the wall, using a rubber to rub in and you almost moulding uh, with the rubber. Now let me explain to you the sorts of colour um, materials I use for colour. So um, that's a rather messy box. It's been out and about and it's got rather grim. Uh, that is the oil pastels that I love um, and uh, I uh, really like the gallery um, uns uh, inscribe ones because they're relatively cheap and they're also not too soft and then I use soft pastels um, and I have a tub and I don't take them all out with me but I have a tub of these uh, gouache um, now I said to you, and I'm going to demonstrate this actually, that there, the, the, the autumn studies I showed you, the coloured ones, I just used these three materials. That's all I used. Um, and that was quite nice actually. So um, I uh, took the whole box of the gallery uh, oil pastel, the whole box of these, and then one or two of those. And that worked a treat actually. So those, those, that's something I do. The other things I wanted to show you, um, if I'm going to use, I showed you those acrylic paintings and I collage them and so on. If I'm going to paint with acrylics outside, I don't um, take endless colours, I keep it really simple. Um, I have one each of the primary colours and some sort of a white um, and a very uh, poor brush that's very stubbly and cheap because I know it's going to get a little bit messed up. And sometimes I'll mix a colour in a jar and uh, take it with me as well, depending. So that lilac you saw that I used on the ones on the wall, I mixed that in a jar and then just took that with me. And I take a rag as well, because I'm rubbing into the paper with my fingers or with a stubbly brush. I'm not using anything too fancy. I want um, it to be raw. I don't want to get over fiddly. Um, so that's kind of what I take. And I literally sometimes just use these neat and I rub them into the paper and sometimes mix on the paper. So there's a couple of other things I use. So if I'm going to use acrylics, I often don't just use acrylics. I'll use one or two of these, what I call the Woody um, Stabilo, and one or two ink tents pencils, which are watercolour pencils. So I don't take the whole lot out with me. I keep them in these boxes, and I take these boxes out with me and make a mix of things I'm going to take. These are just um, boxes that we use for takeaways, or you can get them in the supermarket. They're great. And um, I just take one or two out with me with those paints, and maybe one or two of these um, ink tents uh, pencils. If you're not familiar with ink tents, they're beautiful pencils, you can wet them and when you wet them they don't dissolve but you get a kind of a richer line and you can kind of work with them a little bit wetter so they're really nice. They also can produce quite nice fine lines and they're very creamy and rich so I really like those. Um, and the Stabilos, again, they're all soluble as well and they make nice lines too. So as I say, if I'm going out doing my acrylic work, I have those, one or two of those and one or two of those. And that's uh, jobs are good and I don't, don't have other things that I take out with me. And one thing I would say that I think is really useful to know is that when you go out, uh, don't take, up, take out everything with you just in case. I say that I always have this in mind, I'm going to do this type of a study today, I'm going to do that type of study today, and I take out the materials accordingly. So you know when you start, because otherwise, going out there with all your materials and looking um, around you, it kind of gets overwhelming. So it's very helpful to just have your paper, have it taped if you're going to you know, tape it, um, and... Um, have the materials that you're going to use and just get going. So, so I've got set up so that I'm going to show you one of the uh, couple of minute studies. I'm not going to time it, um, but I'm going to do it quite quickly. And usually I'd have my timer set for two to three minutes just so that I didn't um, over fiddle. So I've got my A4 paper that I've taped into three because um, I quite like doing these long thin ones. You can do it as, as you like. I showed you some other ones that were more A6. 
um, and I'm literally going to be focusing, I'm going to be using some gouache, I've got a woody, I've got a graphite stick and I've got a couple of my ink tents uh, pencils. I don't always use all of these and I might not use them all today but just so that I've got them there to hand and some spray water that I might need. So I'm going to get started and all I'm going to do is I'm going to be really loose and really uh, free. Um, I've already put too much uh, paint on but never mind. So I quite like it when it goes to the edges because when you um, pull the uh, tape away you get a nice kind of clean line. So all I'm going to do is rub in according to how I want to create those sorts of shapes really that are there. It's not supposed to be representational, it's not supposed to be um, completely literal and I am, as you can see, being really loose and I'm just trying to get some marks down on the thing and some work out as I say better than others. Um, all I'm trying to do there is to create some volume with the paint, some shape um, and now I'll go in with my, uh, in this case my Stabi Stabilo, the, pen is very, the paint is still very wet but I'm really trying to create some of that sort of density and I'm going to move my arm around and um, I'm going to change the types of marks I make and hopefully you can see what I'm trying to achieve. Um, I want to create some of that distance, um, even though it's not completely representational. Using different, it's that variety of marks that makes it interesting. I'm not being too precious, I'm seeing where my eye goes. Um, hopefully you can see. Um, I'm trying, as I say, to create that variety of marks. It's not supposed to be representational but it is supposed to show some of what's going on. And I might just leave it there, or I might sort of come in now, now it's all wet, I might come in to get some dark areas in with my ink tents. This is my favorite color, my dark indigo or deep indigo. I'm trying to create some of that real sort of dottiness. And then I quite like the much more kind of what I call lumpy, so it's a different sorts of marks. And then I'm quite a one for wanting to create, I quite like it when the things at the front are bigger and then the things at the back are smaller. Now you say that doesn't look anything like that, but it's got elements of it that is important. Now one thing I wanted to do, I might even spray it, one thing I just wanted to do to finish is to create a different sort of line, which is that you know, feathery line. So I'm always thinking, what's the variety? How does one shape fit with another? And I quite like that sort of dotty edge because it goes so, it's such a, a variation compared to the dark planting. Of course, it would be different if you were out there. You wouldn't necessarily be seeing the same things. Hopefully you get an idea, really simple, really quick, really free, trying to get the shapes in and then some of those patterns and lines and marks in using the other tools. Okay, so this is the second demo that I want to do and if you remember I shared with you the studies that were on the wall and I've just put one of them here uh, so that you can see it more closely. Um, four of the studies I did out in the uh, autumn woodland um, and hopefully you can you can at least see some of those and and the looseness of them and then on the other side here I've I've actually the view I'm going to just show you um, the color version of I actually did a black and white charcoal so that's what that is and I just pop that there so you can have a, a bit of a, a see of that as well whilst you're, you're watching so this one I'm not going to necessarily do in two minutes, but what I am going to do is, this is the scene here, um, which is uh, a lot of cherry trees actually, all in various 
stages and there's a, another tree behind which isn't a cherry tree uh, which is more of the sort of rusty ready orangey colors and i'm going to use um the three uh materials i talked to you about the oil pastels the softer pastels and then some gouache and probably what i'm going to do is i'm going to use some darker colored gouache to act as a sort of like the under colors and i'm going to use a mixture of the soft pastels and the wax pastels as I go. Now the really nice thing about you mixing these media is they kind of resist each other and you can kind of layer over them and you get kind of nice effects by doing that. So I'm going to get started and hopefully um, just seeing that you can actually see. Sorry where my hand is, you probably won't be able to. So I've decided I'm going to start off with this um, soft pastel and I'm going to rub it in a bit. It's going to, some of it's going to disappear. And then I'm going to overlay it and I'm going to, you know, make some, some mess. And I'm going to try and get into it. Because the thing about it is here, is you just kind of start to act really intuitively. That's what you need to do. I'm going to use a, it's not, it's not red, but I'm, I'm kind of getting into that sort of, I like that sort of like the mass of stuff at the back there. So I'm rubbing that in. So that's all soft pastel. You can see I'm starting to get some, some effects in the way that I'm working. I'm going to come in now um, with some more, with some oil pastel over the top. And it's going to resist and it's going to get messy and I'm going to be able to do some marky making things. I'm still kind of rubbing in, I'm still getting the areas in before I'm going to start using more line work. So I'm just, I'm just going with the flow. I'm seeing what I like to, I quite like these sort of, the way it's sort of, little circular things here and kind of and you can see how a funny effect you get when they layer over and I'm going to come back now with some maybe some more orangey browny colours on this now that's much redder actually and I'll overlay with some with some brown as well got some brown here put some out so it'll make it a bit easier to See, I hope you can see that, and you can rub if you if it's getting too kind of not what you want. I mean, I'm 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 starting to feel that that's too dark, so I'm going to come back and put some more red over. I'm not getting to the colour I want yet. I'm going to put some orange over, so you can see how loose you can be, and how much you can get or get away with really with these studies. I'm going to come in with some gouache in a minute. Kind of liking the way it goes all feathery up there. And I'm just, you know, going with what I kind of like to feel I'm, I'm wanting to kind of create, really. Now, I'm going to be very, very loose. And I'm going to literally press in some of this purple on the, as the under colour. That. And you can see I could actually just drag it with the thing if I wanted to. work with their habit and to try and get that kind of huddled over effect of the of the trees and they're quite low on the ground and how they kind of slumbery and sort of arms sort of outstretched really so hopefully you can get an idea of how I'm working with these things and how that is uh, similar to what's going on there. And I may just come back in and say, well, I'd quite like to get some more of those dots in. And I'd quite like to get that because it is quite a, a nice effect. And I've got some smaller ones, but maybe I want to put some bigger ones in and I want to put them through. The
So I just thought I'd show you the two finished small uh, demonstration pieces I did so that you can see them maybe a little bit closer up. And I wanted to just say as well that when I do these studies out in the field, rather than from photographs, I'm actually looking in different directions. I'm not just looking at a single view. So necessarily the, the pictures produced or the images produced are not what you see exactly in front of you because that's not how I'm creating them. I'm looking in one direction, then another, maybe connecting one bit from one view I'm looking at to another. So, and that's how you create these interesting compositions. And subsequently, my paintings are not single views, they're multiple views and experiences of the place. And that's really what I'm aiming for. So just be aware that, you know, you look in different directions to create an interesting uh, piece of work on the page. It doesn't matter that it whether it looks like what's in front of you. In fact, hopefully it won't. It'll be more interesting and layered. And I'm creating, as you can see from the way I was working, I'm superimposing one material on top of the other, so creating this depth through the layers. So I just wanted to bob back on here. I hope you found the demos useful and also the other uh, pieces that I described to you around the materials and the examples there. I do have a YouTube channel called Liz Ackerley and on that channel I have a lot of videos that I've been sharing uh, during 2020 actually of me developing this work on location. So for example for the summer woodland studies that I showed you in the collage I have two videos on my channel. One was me out and about in the woodland creating the acrylic paintings and then the other one was me reconfiguring them back in the studio. Similarly with the examples I was showing you of the small studies, I have videos showing me out and about doing those small studies and also many of the other works uh, that I was talking about the, and the approaches, I've got videos showing me doing those works uh, out on location. So good luck with going out there and um, having a go. I think you'll find it a lot of fun. Um, it's really an enjoyable part of the process. And thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.